three insurances that you have to have as a real estate investor. This video is about what kinds of insurances you should have as a real estate investor, especially if you're not just a landlord, but a vacation rental owner. I want to go into the very big details of the insurances that you have to have and the reasons why. Hi, my name is Julia M. Spencer. I'm a real estate investor, full-time real estate investor, and I publish audiobooks on my craft, on real estate investing. I have some of the best-selling audiobooks available online for you to download today at my website, juliamspencer.com. Don't forget to go there after you watch this video or even right now and check them out. Now I'm going to tell you exactly why it is advantageous to have these kinds of insurances if you're a real estate investor. And I'm going to tell you this because I have done this and I have been there. I'm not just paraphrasing some other investor. I've not been to the seminars, these get rich quick scheme seminars that are coming surely to a hotel near you. I have actually been there. I've done these deals, I've ran into these problems, and I want to teach you to think about these things because this is coming from the School of Hard Knocks. I've done this, I've been there, and I can definitely tell you from experience exactly what you need to look out for. Now you can go to reality shows every day, home improvement shows, or real estate investing shows, or flipping shows, but I am an actual real estate investor. I do this full time. Most of the time I'm actually off, like today. I'm actually at the beach just enjoying myself. Um, but for the few hours a week that I do work, I actually work very intensely and I understand my craft very well and I want to teach you what I know. Now I help real estate investors all over the world to make the most out of their money. I am a coach to some of the most successful real estate investors and my audiobooks are some of the top ones on real estate investing. Don't forget to go to my website juliamspencer.com. I'm also on all social media channels. Go on to YouTube, to Facebook. All you have to do is Google my name, Julia M. Spencer. M stands for money and you'll find me. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hundreds and hundreds of videos there are free advice like this one that you can download, that you can listen to. Um, all of them point you to my audiobooks that you can download anytime and anywhere and get the best and the most concrete, to the point, concise advice that you can get anywhere on real estate investing. So let's talk about the three insurances that you have to have and why. Now the very first one is homeowner's insurance. You don't think you need it, but you probably have it, especially if you own real estate and it's mortgaged, your mortgage company is going to require for you to have homeowner's insurance. And that homeowner's insurance is going to cover everything of your real estate minus the land. And they're going to not just cover what you paid for it, they're going to cover what it costs to replace it in case there's a fire, some other natural disaster and the whole thing has to be torn down and basically rebuilt. This is how the mortgage companies preserve their investments because technically if you have a mortgage on a property you you do own it but you kind of don't it's kind of like until you paid it off there's somebody that has a significant interest in your real estate so you should definitely check and make sure that you have the right coverage amount um, a lot of times what's included is liability in case of a neighbor comes to your house and they slip on the front stairs and and break their neck and sue you that's included and things like that so it's a requirement but you do have a little bit of the flexibility of how many how much coverage you can choose now the mortgage company is going to require for you to obviously cover the structure but you can add additional things like liability and, and other things like that so check with your insurance agent usually you have to check with your insurance agent when you purchase a property on what kind of um, policy you want and what the coverages are that you want and that will be all discussed when you actually close on the house when you purchase it. So homeowner's insurance, very important thing to have. Now the homeowner's insurance will actually even cover things like if you have um, a storm and your roof gets blown away a little bit, you have a leak from the ceiling into the house, that's actually going to be covered. I've had that happen before 
and they actually ended up replacing the entire roof because it had leaks in several places. This was very good for me because my deductible at the time was maybe like $1,500. So I got an entire new roof for about $1,500. It was an older home and this was something that was covered. So it's a good thing for you to have. Um, check on your deductibles. Of course, your insurance will go up the more of a de the less of a deductible you have. So, um, and the more you want to spend out of pocket for each instance, the lower your insurance will be. So this is something that you need to figure out within your budget. Now, the second kind of insurance that I believe you should have, whether you live in a coastal area like this one or anywhere else, is flood insurance. And a very good friend of mine actually is an insurance agent and she's always told me get flood insurance Julia get flood insurance get flood insurance on all your properties and I always said yeah whatever you know I you know I don't listen very well I'm very stubborn I don't listen to people very well but um, it ended up I actually had a flood and it was not in the coastal area it was in middle Georgia there's no ocean there's no lake or anything nearby but we had a flash flood from lots of rain one day and the water actually rose up from below and it was a first floor condo and rose from below it went inside one of my bottom um, closets which were against the wall there the outside wall and everything down there was soaked so we had to rip out the carpet we had to make sure that there was no wood damage or any kind of mold and we had to basically um, get all of that fixed now your homeowner's insurance is not going to cover that you may not know this and this is something that they will not tell you but any water that rises from below is not covered on the homeowner's insurance policy. You need a flood insurance for that. So recommend for you, no matter if you're in a flood zone or not, to talk to your insurance agents and have them explain to you exactly what flood insurance covers and what it doesn't. And of course, we all know about Hurricane Katrina and people not having flood insurance losing their houses because of that. Now, the third type of insurance is totally, totally optional. This flood insurance is only required if your property is located in a flood zone and it is financed by a mortgage company. If it's not financed by a mortgage company, nobody really cares if you lose your property except for you. So it's up to you to get flood insurance. It's not required. The mortgage company is going to insure you for, for everything because they don't want to lose their investment. So you're going to have to be, you have to get flood insurance if your real estate is located in a flood zone. But this third insurance that I want to talk about is totally optional. It's a homeowner's warranty. And the cool thing about homeowner's warranties these days are you can pay a very small fee per month. I pay for most of my real estate $38, $39 a month. And they cover all the appliances, all plumbing, all power issues, um, anything to do with water heater, air conditioning, heating, things like that. And you can actually choose. They give you a list of like 40 different things that they cover. They can cover pools, um, they can cover um, hot tubs, I mean just anything and everything that's a system that can break in your house. And let me tell you why this is very important because I've been pretty much, um, I don't want to use a bad word, but I've been too cheap to buy this insurance for many, many years. Um, but as I accumulated more real estate and I got more tenants, you know, it started to get really expensive to pay for fixes. I mean, there's because there's always going to be something broken. The air conditioning needs servicing. The water heater is leaking. Um, you may have an issue with um, with the refrigerator not properly um, refrigerating your food, or maybe just leaking. And every time one of these things happen, it costs eighty to $150 and sometimes even more depending on if you're calling somebody on the weekend to come out there and look at just to look at it and then if the service call actually requires parts and labor then you have to pay on top of that so something goes wrong you're out three four or five hundred dollars in one go and that's just not feasible especially if you have lots of real estate and I can tell you from experience stuff is going to go wrong on pretty much a daily basis if you have a lot of real estate that doesn't even matter if you maintain your properties well but if you're not the one that wants to run from property to property and property and fix your own stuff and just want somebody else to handle it those insur that insurance homeowners warranty insurance are very very valuable and I do highly highly recommend you get those as soon as you purchase your property especially if you're using it as a vacation rental 
um, or as a long-term um, tenant-occupied rental. So those are the three insurances I suggest you get. Homeowner's insurance, flood insurance, and homeowner's warranty. And for more tips like this, go to my website, juliamspencer.com. Download your free guide to real estate investing there and sign up for my newsletter. Thanks. For your free guide to real estate investing, visit juliamspencer.com.